there out there watching YouTube this is Josh at Trine Tech and today we're gonna to do a little short emulation test um, so if you saw my review I talked about gaming and I didn't really touch on emulation at the time because I hadn't really tested too many emulators on this but there's other channels that have tested this far more extensively than I have but Right now I'm just going to show emulators that I have found to work fairly well, or at least games that I've found to work really well. First off, let me say that this uh, tablet is not really like the best or most strongest suited at emulation, but it can play some emulators that are really well optimized fairly well, um, especially PPSSPP and Redream. So, uh, most of the tests are going to come from those two, but I am going to show a little bit of GameCube emulation with Paper Mario with the Dolphin emulator. Um, but I'm going to tell you, like, if you're expecting something that's going to be able to just, like, power through, like, really challenging emulation, um, you're probably going to be better suited with the Galaxy Tab S6. But this thing can play some emulation and it can do uh, some emulation with certain emulators very well. So the first one we're going to test out is PPSSPP. Alright, and so let's get my Bluetooth going and I'm going to be using my Xbox One wireless controller. Which right now I have my phone clip in, but I just leave that on. Okay. Take this clip off. All right, so I've got my games here. Um, we're going to try some of the more kind of graphically demanding games. Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep, Final Mix, and Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII. So right now my settings for this are set at... Let's see here. I'll show you the game settings. Okay, so we're in the Vulcan backend, buffered and rendering, I do not have the post-processing shader on. It actually looks better without it. And the rendering resolution is four times the PSP, so that's a little above 1080p resolution. And then the display resolution is native device resolution. Okay. Hardware tessellation. Uh, curves quality high. I did not upscale. And I believe I do have yeah, anisotropic filtering on 16x. Okay, other than that, nothing special. So the pre-rendered scenes on this don't look too good. We're gonna load our game. All right, so now it's playing at 100%, 30 frames. It looks really good.
So let's maintain 100%. Uh, this plays at 30 FPS. Playing very smooth. And it looks really good. I may be using some cheat codes on this. I'm super OP on this. But even without cheat codes, like I I got my guy pretty powerful. Okay, so I'm going to create a save state because I want to go back and play that later. Um, I actually plan to replay through this game prior to me playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. Okay, so this is the Japanese-English patch version of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. probably do another one of these later on and test out like God of War or something for some reason I don't have it saved on my hard drive although I swore I had that game saved backed up So that's just the FMV, so. There we go. Sorry about that. It's been, it was a little blurry and I just tapped on it and kind of cleared it up. Okay, so I guess I don't have... This is just the FMV again. So I'm going to tell you like the pre-rendered FMVs look really terrible on this uh, emulator because there's really like no way to scale them up. But then if you go to like actual rendered scenes, like this one, it actually looks really good. 
Like I said, uh, this is 4x PSP resolution, so this is around 1080p, and it plays at a smooth and steady 30 FPS. So right there in that scene, there's a little bit of a slowdown. Very minimal, like for a few seconds. I don't know if it's the lighting effects or what, but for some reason that scene right there, very minor slowdown. It's the only place I've seen one on this emulator. It looks really good. It's very sharp. Alright, we're gonna skip this event. I wanna take you to some actual in game footage. So as you can see, all the pre-rendered scenes like that are rendered in Game Engine actually run really well on this, and they look really good. Okay. There's a lot of story at the beginning of this. A meteor shower. Okay, so now we're like actually in some gameplay here. Not much. This is like the little tutorial portion. So, but you you'll get to see like actual playing within the game here. I can't see much from here. So as you see here, like it's very smooth gameplay, looks really good. I've got time to spare. I'm gonna be honest, this uh, the PSP uh, emulator PPSSPP, like it's they've just done amazing work. Cause this is this is a low end processor, and in the Vulcan uh, Vulcan, it plays very smooth, very well. 
I've actually had this emulator from when it first came out, and I bought the gold version just to support the devs. And I, like, honestly, this, this is one of the best optimized emulators for for every platform that they de develop it on. Okay, we're gonna leave that as is, and I'm gonna create a save state for that. Because I would like to play that game more later. All right, so that's it for the um, PSP on PPSS PP emulator. And I'm using the latest version. Um, probably, like, probably not the latest like dev version, but just the latest on the Android store. And by the way, you can buy this emu or you can get this emulator for free. You don't have to get the gold edition, but I strongly recommend if you can, you know, afford a few bucks, just get the gold edition because it supports the devs or at least donate to the devs because they've done really well. Okay, so we'll come back in a little bit and we'll do some Dreamcast simulation, but we're gonna take a little break here and I'll bring up uh, Redream and I'll show you some Dreamcast simulation coming up next. All right. Okay, welcome back. Um, so we're going to be doing a little bit of Dreamcast emulation and the emulator we're going to be using is the Redream emulator. Now, <clears throat> for this emulator, I'm actually using the, the paid version. It is a very, very good emulator. Uh, you Most of the features are not locked behind a paywall for the pro version. But one feature that is, is the upscaling of resolution. So you can pretty much do every other feature except uh, playing at higher resolution. All right. Um, I think they charge like eight bucks for the pro version. And with how excellent this uh, emulator is, I, I, personally say it's well worth it. Um, unlike the Daemon PS2 Pro emulator, which is not very well optimized, uses a ton of hacks to uh, get working. This is a very well um, optimized emulator. So we're gonna play in the original game aspect ratio of 4.3 but we're gonna have it, the resolution is gonna be 1920 by 1440. So um, basically as close as you can get to the vertical resolution of the, uh, of the tablet. Okay, so that's sharper. Okay, so 1920 by 1440. All right, um, and Frame skip auto, frame rate counter, and let's see here. Nothing special there. Okay. All right. Um, I'm again running Xbox One controller through Bluetooth. 
uh, for these emulators. You, you can use whatever controller you want, um, but this is a good controller to use and it works on you know other games as well that support Bluetooth controllers. So um, Xbox One controller is, is probably one of the best suited for this. All right. Okay, so we're, we're going to test three games. We're going to test Grandia 2, Soul Reaver, and Soul Calibur. And we're going to play a little bit of each, and then we're going to go from there. So for this game, I actually have a save file, so we won't have to go through the whole intro and everything. Oh, my battery's running low. So as you can see, it's very sharp. Colors really pop. All right, that lowers my defense, so I'm not gonna equip that right now. And as you can see by the FPS counter in the corner, it is running easily smooth at 60 FPS. It is able to say we're going to go into battle. Okay, so I'm going to make a save state. All right, so save state's been made, but I think I've shown enough here to show that this easily runs this game. So we're going to play some other games here. Okay, so we're gonna go to Soul Reaver. This one I already have a save file for too, so we don't need to go through any any like intro or anything. Okay, so again, this game looks and plays very smoothly.
I mean, other than the textures being like, you know, a little mottled. But that's just kind of the game showing its age. But the uh, polygons and everything look very sharp. And everything plays super smooth on this. I'm gonna be honest, like, <laughs> I've never played through this game. Like, I had it, I had it on PS2, and I never, like, I never played through it. So, like, right now I have no idea where to go. Okay, something's happening, so. Pretty sure. Okay, so I'm gonna save it there. And we're gonna call it good on this one. This obviously is very, uh, very playable. Yes, really quit the game. Okay. All right, so we're gonna exit out of there. And next we're gonna play Soul Calibur, which is a fighting game. Um, I don't have it on here right now, but I've also tested uh, Dead or Alive. I think it's Dead or Alive 2. Yeah, Dead or Alive 2. Um, also very playable. Pretty much any game on this emulator is going to be very playable on this tablet at 19, uh, 1920 by 1440. And the video doesn't really do it any justice, but the, the sound on this, like, on this tablet with the emulator is, like, just amazing. That's my girl right there, Sonya. I think that's her name. Okay. We're, we're done. Welcome back to the stage of history. 
All right, who do I want to be? I want to be my boy, Nightmare. Got him. So as you see, very smooth, very uh, very playable. Um, this is one of those games you don't want to have any slowdowns. Everything looks really sharp, really good. I mean, for I don't. What is this game? Twenty years old. looks really good on this emulator and the sound is just amazing messed up my perfect Still one. Okay, so we're gonna exit out of that. Okay, so as you see from all three of those games, very smooth, very playable, definitely can handle Dreamcast emulation, no problem. Um, there's not really much to gain by running this at a higher resolution because, I mean, the vertical resolution of this is 1600 and then after that it goes to like, I think 2560 times something. So at that point, unless I'm running it at like a stretched aspect ratio, it's kind of going to be detrimental. Um, at that point I'm rendering it sharper than the actual display resolution. So other than maybe getting some down sampling, there's not really much point. Um, honestly, like 1440p is very, very sharp, looks very crisp, looks very good um, for 3D games. Uh, later on, I might you know revisit this and try some other games like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 or some other 2D games. But as you can see, it can handle 3D games, so it can definitely easily handle um, the th uh, 2D games. All right, so we're going to do one last emulator, and it's only going to be one game because a lot of the, I'm going I'm to warn you right now, like a lot of the games on this emulator are not playable. Okay, so I had Wind Walker. Let me refresh the library because I deleted some of these. So I tried Wind Walker, Mario Sunshine, um, not very playable. In fact, a lot of games on this emulator are not very playable. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether I put it in Vulcan mode or um, OpenGL. It just really doesn't, doesn't matter. We'll try Vulcan and for pixel lighting. I don't remember turning that on. All right, and we have multi-threading on. And we have dual core enabled. And what else? 
So the rendering resolution is 1x, so <laughs> show FPS. No, I want to show my FPS. Enhancements. So this is just like native GameCube resolution. This is not even 2x. Okay. So we're. Go I'm going to show you Paper Mario, which is playable, but most of the games on this are not playable. Okay. Like they're just not. Doesn't matter what settings I put them in, they they will not play. Paper Mario is graphically a pretty simple game, so yeah, we're going to be able to play some games with this. But most of the games, even for GameCube, are not playable. Okay, so it's compiling the shaders. Alright, so here's the other weird thing, like... 50 hertz mode, 60 hertz mode. I change it to 60 hertz mode. But if, oh, it actually changed to 60 FPS. Interesting. Because the last time I did this, it did not. So it does kick down to 50 here in game. But as far as like playability, yes, yeah, definitely playable. Okay, so now it's hovering like between 47 to 50, occasional dips like down to 35. But graphically, I mean, this is like a very simple game. No. Okay, so the FPS counter on this is pretty small, but right now it's pretty much staying around 48 to 50 FPS. As you can see, it, it's very smooth. But this is one of the few games that like actually really plays emulation really smoothly on this. Most of the games, it doesn't matter. OpenGL, so OpenGL, tends to work a little bit better on this emulator with most processors than um, than Vulkan. It's just maturity of drivers and maturity of development on OpenGL for this emulator. So I, I hope they optimize it a little bit better. I have no idea what I'm doing. And see there is like some sort of crash there. I think it's because it's running in dual code or dual core mode. And that, that happens sometimes on this game. But then if you disable the dual core uh, mode, it like it runs quite a bit slower. So it's you know pop up with errors or Oh, okay. I'm gonna be honest, like I've never played this game before. <laughs> I didn't have a GameCube. Don't judge me. Um, in fact, come to think of it, I didn't even have a, a Wii. First Wii system, or first Nintendo system I had was a Wii U, and then I had Wii games on that.
Okay, so even in the battles, it looks pretty smooth. Plays very nicely. Can I get to the save point or no? bit. So like I'm saying occasional dips go down to like maybe 45, 46, uh, low dips of 41, but overall this is definitely very playable. But this is like, this is the outlier, like most of the games I've tried, Fire Emblem, I tried the Fire Emblem, um, what is it, not Radiant Dawn, Path to Radiance, whatever, the, the Fire Emblem for this, for GameCube. Not very playable. All right. Okay, can I save? I don't like using save states on this emulator because they're not very compatible and then like when you update to a new version, it very rarely carries over the save states. So it actually can break game compatibility. So I try to avoid using save states on this emulator. Okay, she joined my party. And I say, a little bit of a slow down there. Okay. Uh, for one X rendering, this actually does not look too bad. At least this game doesn't. Alright, so I'm going to save and then we're going to exit out and then... Because this game is actually, I don't know, it's pretty fun. Oh, okay. Alright, so um, that's pretty much it for the emulation uh, test on this tablet. Um, it, when it comes to GameCube emulation, I'm, I'm not going to say I was surprised, but I was a little bit disappointed that more GameCube games weren't playable. And I'm going to say, like, if you're hoping to, like, get this tablet for GameCube em emulation or using Dolphin, like, I really wouldn't recommend it. 
But what I was pleasantly surprised by was um, how well it still played uh, PSP on PPSSPP and uh, the Redream emulator. Um, neither one of those really surprised me too much because honestly, um, PSP and PPSSPP uh, emulation has been really well optimized. Um, whether you play on PSP or mobile device, doesn't really matter. Um, it's very optimized. But to be honest, like even with the settings turned up to like 4X, that's where I was surprised because I thought maybe this would be able to play at 2 or 3X and it's actually able to play at 4X. Um, I don't know, maybe possibly higher. The other game I will try out later, uh, maybe in another test in another video, is going to be um, probably God of, the God of War games. Uh, for a couple reasons, those run at 60 FPS, and those are known to be pretty challenging, pretty demanding games. All right. Um, like I said, don't don't be expecting like be doing any super powerful, super demanding emulation on this. Like PS2, no, it's it's not not gonna work. Like you need a really uh, beefy processor um, to be able to run that. Like I'd say a Snapdragon 855 or higher. And it's just, it's because one, PS2 is hard to emulate, and two, the Daemon PS2 Pro emulator is just horribly, horribly optimized. Um, but don't try to emulate, like, I'd say Wii games. Like, Dolphin um, is still pretty hard on mobile devices um, when it comes to Wii games, too. Uh, even with the OpenGL, which is a lot more mature in its optimization. So I wouldn't recommend that. Um, I did try uh, FPSE on this. I will show that in another video, but right now I'm, I'm having a hard time getting the visual settings on that emulator working the way I want. So I may do EPSXE or FPSE. PS1 emulation and just see how it's working, but I just wasn't happy with the way the uh, visual um, image on the emulation for FPSC was turning out. So I need to do a little bit more research. Other than that, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like, give it that thumbs up, and uh, if you didn't, give it that thumbs down. But it'll make me a sad panda, so at least give some sort of explanation as to why you're disliking my video. Otherwise, I can never get any better and I can never improve. So if you don't tell me why you dislike the video, how am I gonna make my videos any better? Uh, finally, if you wanna see more of this content, make sure to click subscribe down below, ring the bell for notifications and so you can see more of my content. Anyways, um, this is Josh at Trine Tech signing off the net Y'all take care and be safe.